You're watching Deck Pass Live presented by Xfinity. Day three of the Phillips 66 National Championships have concluded. An amazing night of swimming, and I just am so excited about the fresh faces that we have seen get to the top of the medal stand and a lot of the, the veterans who are swimming extremely well. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Cummings. And I am Amy Van Dyken, and we are joined by a superstar, if you will, someone yes. that may have bailed on breakfast with me the other day. <laughs> but that's fine. Madison Cox, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you very much. Good, now, where were you at that breakfast? I, yeah. yeah, so I actually fell asleep at 8 p.m. I kid you not, and I got the text when I woke up at 7 a.m. and I was like, guess I missed the breakfast. Oh boy. So I deeply apologize, <laughs> but I walked in at the very last second, I was like, hey. Oh, see, I thought I was your good luck charm. <laughs> no, yeah. it turns out I wasn't. You got to sleep in a little longer. Yes, that's was, what helped. It was my 11 hours of sleep that got me. Yeah, Love that's it. what helped you win at 200 breaths. Kids out there get 11 hours of sleep before a 200 breaths. That's right. that's really that's the only the way to get through it. Right. So let's talk about that 200 breaths. Your first national title. Yeah. How does that feel? Yeah, it felt good. You know, I, I didn't really know what to expect going into it. Right. Um, that really wasn't where my intentions were set on the brush and I was more focusing on the IMs coming in, but you know, it was my first race and the first race of every meet is pretty exciting. So I just kind of, you know, I invested in it and I, I swam the race how I knew how to swim it and it ended up turning out pretty well for me. Madison, well, let's go ahead really quickly yeah. and let's take a look at that race. Yeah, Cause I would love to get what you think about it right here as you look on that screen, so warming nice. up. Right? Yeah, my, my, my normal little. Okay. Do you, so, do you have the same routine every time? Every time. Okay, every good. single time, every single race. And here it is, the last 25. Look at how much of a lead you got. Is that Was that surprising to you that you were that far ahead? Actually, yeah. I think my goggles play a trick on me, or maybe my mind does, but I like I do it in practice, too. I see little, like, phantom people beside Ooh. me, and I, I honestly thought there was someone right beside me to my right. So when I touched and I saw that, I think I was actually genuinely very shocked. So winning the 200 breaststroke has to be, I mean, a feather in your cap, your first national title. Uh -huh. That's got to springboard you into what's coming up next, the 100 breaststroke. Yes, Are you excited yeah. for that? Yeah, I'm excited for the 100 breaststroke. You know, it's a little bit new in my program. Okay. Um, and, and going into this meet, I think it was one of the events I was most excited for. So I think it's going to be a good race. I think it's just going to be a fun day. You know, it's always fun to mix it up, that little sprint event. Um, uh, so I, I think I think there's going to be a good race. You know, Bria's in there, and I, I saw she had a really good final um, yesterday in the 200 breaststroke. So I, I'm really excited for, you know, what the competition does and, and what, what's in store for me as well. So you've got to the both breaststrokes, you've got mm -hmm. both IMs. That's four events for Olympic trials. Are you going to try to maybe add a fifth in there? Um, I actually don't know. Um, right now I'm just kind of taking it day by day. You know, the IMs are definite in there. You know, two breaststroke, I like that one. I honestly don't even know where the 100 breaststroke is in the lineup. So that could be a fun one too, maybe 200 freestyle. Um, yeah, just kind of setting myself up for, for a great meet. If you have a great 100 breaststroke here, and, and let's say that you blow out a time that we all know that you can do, uh -huh. would that then eliminate maybe an IM from the program, do you think? I honestly don't know. I mean, okay. I'd have to seriously sit down and consider that with my coach. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it's a potential. Yeah. Well, you got, cool. I think the 4 and I am at Olympic Trials is the first day. So you can yeah. get that out of the yeah, way. Exactly. It's a really exactly. hard event and just kind yep. of have some fun, play around with that 100 yeah. breaststroke. That yeah. would be a good idea. Yeah, I know. So that, that I, I like the lineup um, for Olympic Trials in that, in that regards. You know, you get the 400 I am. It's a little nerve wracking first race, but you know, it, it's, it's always fun to get started off with that. I can't imagine what a program will be like to lead off a meet with a 400 I am. Yeah. Well, get it out of the way, but it's just like, it's really probably one of the top three toughest races oh, on absolutely. the program absolutely. to start off. I mean, that, I mean, it kind of puts a little bind in your body to be like, oh my gosh, I just had the 400 I am. But I, I would imagine you've done that a lot and you'd have to mentally just kind of shake that off. Yeah, how do you, exactly. how are you able to do that? Um, you know, I think these long meets like this, it's just one day at a time. You know, you don't think, okay, 400 IM, and then the next day, uh, you know, 200 free, 200 IM. You know, you just one day at a time. One day, you just focus 4 IM, that's it, that day's over. Let the emotions rest and get ready for the next day. So we're talking a lot about swimming, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. we're at a pool. But mm -hmm. It makes sense. But I'm kind of interested in what does Madison Cox do when you're not swimming, when you're not training? What are your hobbies? Um, so right now, my, I wouldn't call this a hobby, but I am preparing for med school. Um, so with that in my mean, in my spare time, I like to volunteer. So we have a really good children's hospital in town that I volunteer at. 
Um, and then in, uh, aside from that right now, just getting my applications ready um, and, and just gearing up for the next stage of my life. What about little cards that you like to make for people? And my, yes, my, I love, <laughs> so I make these handmade greeting cards. I just got into it this past um, December and I am absolutely obsessed with it. I love it. It's just a therapeutic like little activity. I never considered myself artistic or creative or anything like that, but some for some reason these cards have really, have really sparked my interest. Do you sell them? No, 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 I just oh. give them. I, I do okay. not sell them, no, no. Okay. If, if, if anyone was, wants one, ask me. I can, I'm can. i happy to make them one for free. I'm, I'm not trying to... I was going to whip out my wallet and say, I'll have a few of whatever <laughs> right? Cox is making. That's right. <laughs> That's really cool. So you're, you're, you. You, you don't think you're creative. So how did that come about? Just say, Did you just say, oh, let me just try to make some greeting cards and see how this is going to work? Well, it started during the holiday time. So it started with Christmas cards, you know, yeah. holiday cards. Yeah, right. Um, things like that, and, and I really enjoyed um, the effect it had, you know, on the people you gave it to. I think it, they're a lot more meaningful than just, um, you know, store-bought cards. And I really put a lot of thought into, you know, who I'm giving it to, what they yeah. like, and um, try to gear it in that direction. So heading into medical school, have you decided what kind of doctor you want to be yet? Not yet. I'm okay. kind of I'm trying to go in with an open mind, keep all the specialties or even just um, general practitioner open you know I, I don't know what's gonna spark my interest once I go in there but I'm, I'm trying to just gain all the knowledge I can get and make a make the best decision I can for myself well if you ever need to play with a paraplegic I am more than welcome <laughs> to be your guinea pig uh, well, lots of things you. go on with us so you just let me know yeah. Madison thank and I'm your girl I, I appreciate okay that. I'm here for you and I'm, I guess you're okay with the sight of blood and everything the, yes. the, okay because yes. that's I've, I've heard people go to medical school and they take their first scalpel and they faint they pass no, out. I mean I I've never held a scalpel but I I'm I think I'll be okay with okay that. I've I, shattered enough positions to think that yeah, uh, I, I think you yeah, you probably had like your ear and your fingers prodded and everything. So you yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you understand that. Well, good. I'm I'm really excited for the rest of the meet for you. Not just the 100 breaststroke, but obviously that 200 IM, which mm -hmm. I would I would say is your best event. I would too. Yeah. And yeah. after the year you've had with dealing with your your supposedly positive drug test and, and clearing your name, uh -huh. getting back into it, I would imagine that adds a lot more motivation oh, and absolutely. importance to the race. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm very excited both for tomorrow and the day after with the 2IM. I think it's going to be a good couple days ahead. I cannot wait, I Madison. Wait. <laughs> it's going to be so much fun. Thank you for joining Thank us here you. at Deck Pass Live. Good luck. Go swarm down. I know you got a little <laughs> bit more recovery to do. It takes yeah. like hours to I get know, out. I'm about to get program. on the massage table. Yes, so. girl. Oh. Bring we me should, with my, you. My part of recovery. I was going to say, bring us with you, <laughs> yeah. please, because we are just working so hard. It is. Oh, my gosh. Thank absolutely you, so yeah, great. Absolutely. So, Thank you guys for having good me. Good luck. So Thank there's you. a lot Thank that you. goes on here at the Phillips 66 National Championship. There's a lot that you just don't see whether you're watching us on watching us here on Deck Pass Live or watching all the races on TV. So let's give you an idea of some of the sights and sounds that are happening here at Palo Alto. And again, you're watching Deck Pass Live, presented by Xfinity. Jeff Cummings with Amy Van Dyken. And we have really one of the superstars of this meet so far, Maxime Rooney. Glad to have you here, fresh off your 100 butterfly win. Thank you. It's good to be here. I've got to say, I knew you could kind of put together a butterfly, but 50.6 this morning just kind of rocked me. Did it rock you to see you could post that kind of time? Absolutely. I, you know, going into this meet, I wanted to keep an open mind, stay focused, and execute the best way, like I know how. Um, 
put everything I, I do in practice to, to work and um, I was able to put it all, all the pieces together and it was, it was really cool to see the result of it. What was really cool for me to see is what people didn't get to see that just happened over here off yeah. camera was Ryan Held came over and started bowing to you, right? Yeah. That's got to make you feel good. You know, I, I've, uh, I was able to meet Ryan in um, well, 2016 when he made the Olympic team, and then I actually got to go to Wugs with him in 2017. We started a great relationship with him, and you know, I think that's what makes the sport so special is because we all want to improve individually, but we use each other and we get faster all together. And I was overjoyed to see him excel in that 100 free because I know, like, I want to race him, he wants to race me, and that's what pulled out the best in us. It was absolutely phenomenal, that 100 freestyle. But today, before even the race began, we knew the 100 fly was going to be the race of the day. And we want you to kind of guide us through it here with us because after that 50.6, we, we had a feeling something really exciting was going to happen. And obviously not not a, a, an easy field to get through. It was very competitive. Uh, so we're taking a look here. You're walking out. There. What are you listening to on your headphones? Um, you know, just music that keeps me grounded. And I, I just wanted to kind of be at peace and keep it really, really light. Uh, I've been listening to music all week just to keep my nerves down and just really keep me present in the race and staying focused into my lane. And um, Was it Yanni? Is that what you were listening to? Yanni? You don't, you don't know Yanni? Yeah, oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, okay, well, but let's it's talk about your race here, yeah, Maxi. So you're coming in here. You're fourth from the bottom here and right there in the middle. And actually, that was a good turn. It, talk us through this. I mean, yeah, you know, um, this morning my race, um, I was surprised with the 3-3 three, three front speed, and um, I just kind of wanted to test the grounds a little bit. I had a race strategy going in tonight, um, but you know when we got when we got off the blocks, I just saw the heat, and I was like, okay, it's time to go, <laughs> it's time to go. And um, you know, I know they're all great racers, especially Jack just came off of coming back from Worlds. Jack Saunderson went to Wugs, and um, Whoa, I just knew it was going to be a stacked heat. And that, that finish. finish is a little funky. I was going to say, wait a minute, hold on. As a butterflyer, I know we start setting that finish up at about 25 meters to go. Maxime, where were you? Um, you know, so funny story, in pace, I did the exact same thing, and uh, Eddie laughed because he told me, you know, you went this time to the nose, and apparently I did that time to the nose again. <laughs> so You could have been so much faster. Um, you know, Do you care? You I, it, it's... Uh, to put into perspective, before this meet, my best time was 52.2 from, yeah. I think, 2017. So I went a best time this morning. And if I hadn't gone the best time this morning, I would have been a best time tonight. So it's, it's been a while since I've had a meet where I've had 100% best times. And uh, like I said in the interview behind the deck, I, I, I really attribute that to just uh, love and joy at work in my life. And um, my family, my Texas family, and um, they've just been super supportive through the transition. And uh, I, th I can definitely see the result of it now. Now, you're talking about transition. What transition are, are, do you, are you willing to talk about your transition? Absolutely. Okay. I, so I made the decision in uh, April uh, to transfer from University of Florida. Um, I just felt in my heart that as I was preparing for the Olympic year next year, um, I, I wanted to be confident with where I'm training. And, you know, in my training, I, I didn't want to have a doubt at all that where I was training was the best place for me and um, really my heart it, it led me to Texas and um, it, it, it's it been very smooth this summer the guys have been spectacular but something that draw, drew me to Texas in the first place was um, in my first round of recruiting coach Eddie uh, was very classy and he told me if I ever changed my mind the door was always open and then at NCAAs this year he didn't have any bad intention at all he came to me and said you know Maxime um, you look a lot happier and just to, I really appreciated that comment from him and more so as I prepare for the Olympic year I, I wanted a coach that really gets that side of me um, because at this level everything's mental now um, you know everyone here is in shape everyone here goes to practice you know we, we put the time in the water we make the physical investments and it, it's now time to refine the mental game and um, just really have a like a coach, an environment that um, you know truly gets me and pushes me to that next step. That's so awesome. Yeah, Good for you. it really is great. Thank and you. So you grew up not too far from here. So you're a California boy, went all across the country to Florida. Now you're Texas. Have you adjusted to Texas food, and have you had a lot of Texas barbecue? Uh -huh. 
so I, I made the joke um, to a couple of my friends uh, that, you know, after NCAAs, um, a buddy of mine recommended this place called Cooper's Barbecue. Yes, and, yes, uh, yes. I had it. It was spectacular. And I said, I'm never having barbecue until I come back to Austin. And I always joke that luckily it worked out in my favor because a month later I ended up back in Austin. Um, but the food's been incredible. I, um, the transition was really smooth. I found a place to live. My housemates are awesome. I got into classes this summer. Um, I think and also in regards to food, I've had the most tacos ever. Uh, yeah. The, yes. the Tex-Mex. Yes. <laughs> Tex-Mex, I love Chewy's. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, the other sauce is the best. The Boom Boom sauce, the jalapeno <laughs> sauce. It's, um, so I'm fueled properly, um, but I'm also fueled with a great environment. So. Yeah, well, as a, as a longhorn myself, I will not argue with any of that. Um, but we're going back to these these times that you're swimming. These are like age group drops. I mean, you right. drop 1.6 right. seconds in your 100 fly. You drop more than a half a second in your 100 free. I know it's really about the environment and everything. But how are you? How do you think you're going to be able to keep making those drops from you know 11 months from now? Absolutely, it's a great question, and I think it really comes back to you know pushing myself, giving my best every day. And um, I, I knew that I, I was gonna execute to my best this meet didn't know what the times were going to be like i just wanted to give my all and you know as long as i give my best um the result will take care of itself and i think the same goes for practice every day um, because you know there are going to be days where you're feeling down and out and you know you're i'm sinking at the bottom of the pool especially with the rocktober coming up and um <laughs> But there are also going to be days where I'm really pushing it with my team, and I, I've able I've been able to have both this summer, and um, I think that's what was really great about training with Texas this summer was you know transitioning and finding that fit, so we don't have to change a lot of details, and we can just keep doing what we're doing, and um, I, I'm really excited for the upcoming year. I'm excited as well because the time that you went this morning made you the fourth fastest American in the event ever. What else are we going to see from you this weekend? Oh, well, that was my final individual race. Oh, way to end it. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I came in. I, I wanted to time trial a tuner fly tomorrow, but we got a really good gauge of where I'm at. I, uh, I just have a relay with my club team tomorrow. That will be a joy because uh, I just love, I love racing, but it's fun to do it with, you know, my old teammates that have always supported me. And, you know, they were my training partner, you know, heading into the last Olymp Olympics. And uh, it's going to be really fun racing them. Um, in regards to your comment about, uh, you know, fourth fastest time ever, um, I heard is the second fastest time in the world this year. Um, uh, it really didn't hit me until after everyone started telling me. Um, and I think that's a good thing because as my, my focus this week was staying in my lane and executing the way I know how, I think it's it's really dangerous when one starts to compare themselves to other people because that strips you of, you know, presence in your own race and, you know, doing the things that make you successful opposed to doing the things that other, makes other people successful. And what I mean by that is, um, obviously, I know Caleb, he's number one in the world. He goes out 22.8 yeah. for that world record. Um, you know, right now I'm working on that front speed. I know I don't have it yet. Um, but I'm working on it, and I know that the 50.6 was the, that race where I, I stayed in my lane. And I think that's something that's just really important to focus on. Yeah. Um, right. Because once you start looking around, you start swimming other people's races. And um, that, that's something really good to keep in mind for myself. Very much so. I think for any swimmer, I always yeah. say that. Stay in your own lane, because it doesn't matter the names that are standing up next to you. Yes. Absolutely. That's something that my coach also said this week is, um, you know, uh, they're just numbers. Yeah. And, um, you know, we put a lot of hype around certain numbers, certain barriers. Um, but the, the, at the end of the day, um, we do it all the time in practice. We, we work with numbers all the time. Yeah. And we pace. Um, so when come to meet, there's no reason to get too stressed over a number. Right. It's now execute, mm -hmm. focus on those details. And um, I'm just really happy to put it all together here. Awesome. It's wise words from Maxime Rooney, Thank everybody. You. And he's so young. <laughs> he's so and he's young. So wise. Young and wise. We love that, but Maxime, Maxime. One thing you have to do. You got to Google Yanni. Listen yes. to some Yanni music. He's yeah. brilliant. You want to you want to calm down? Yanni will do Yanni it. Yanni is your man. <laughs> You'll love it. You'll love it. Or Kenny G. 
Yachty okay. or Kenny G? Either oh, one. Oh, yeah, you know Kenny G, right? I do not. <sighs> oh, boy. Maxime, tomorrow we are going to see you, and your life is going to be yeah. changed. I, I cannot wait to give, introduce you to the world of Yanni awesome. and Kenny G. Yes. It's, it's really cool because, you know, I uh, as I transitioned to Texas, obviously, I started listening to a little bit more country. Yep. And um, I, I was going to listen to some Midland before the race, really, just to calm me down. Uh, one of my teammates recommended another song, and he was like, you got to listen to Texas Longhorn. And um, I, I'm excited for you know game days and everything yeah. just with my team this year. It's so. going to be fun. I'm, I'm really awesome. happy you're Thank thriving you. in your new environment. Congratulations on an awesome week so far. Yeah. I know you got the relay. Maybe you can just end off with another bang. That'll be fun to see. And we'll be, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on you in the next few months, but yeah. just stay in your lane. Thank you very much. And listen to Yanni. Yeah, listen, listen to Yanni yeah. and Kenny G. <laughs> yeah, Kenny G. <laughs> so before you go, Maxime, um, we, we had a trivia question we sent out to the viewers in our afternoon show. And I want to know if you, maybe you know the answer. And we're going to give you guys the answer in a minute. So we want to know who are the youngest and the oldest national champions in USA Swimming, male and female, from 2000 forward. 2000 forward. Okay. Yeah. So there's four um, names. Okay, I think for female, is it Elizabeth Beisel? No. Um, but a lot of people thought that. Yeah, I was thinking her four under I am. Um, it's not, is it Regan Smith? No. Okay. Um, That's a good guess, though. I know, yeah, he, he likes world to record stump last week. people. Yeah. <laughs> um, Who do you think is the oldest female? Oldest female, okay. Um, Dara Torres? Yes. Yep. Legend. All right, um, so let's ding, 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 cool. Ding, 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 so ding, ding, ding. let's look at this. Let's go look at first of all, who is the youngest female national champion from since 2000? Felicia Lee. Oh, Hunter Butterfly. Yeah, yeah. Hunter Butterfly, wow. 13, 13 years old. What, she was year 13 years old in 2006. Wow. 13 right? years wow. old won the Hunter Butterfly. Wow. And as Maxime said, cool. the oldest female was indeed Dara Torres. She was 42 cool. years old yeah. in 2009. Wow. She, after that 2008 Olympics, she came back for one more year, won the 50 freestyle in 2009, 42 Definitely. years old. That's a big gap. I mean, that's, that's, that's a large 29 gap. year gap. I hope once I hit 42 years old, I'm as <laughs> spry as Dara Torres was then. <laughs> Me too. That's I right. can't wait for 42. All right. How about right. the guy? All right. Do you have a guess about the youngest and oldest males? Uh, Michael Phelps. Is he the youngest? He is the youngest. And the oldest, um, man. You could do it, Maxine. Oh my. It's actually Anthony very recent. Anthony Irvin? You, you got oh. it. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so let's nice take, boss. verify yeah. that. So we got our youngest male, 15-year-old Michael Phelps in 2001, oh. just before he turned 16, I believe. And then yeah. Tony Irvin, he was 33 years old at the 2014 Nationals when he won the 50 freestyle. Yeah, so he hadn't even made the Olympic team yet where he became the oldest by far to win an Olympic gold medal in swimming. So, I got to tell you a story about Michael Phelps really quickly. Yeah. So he's 15 years old, right? And I'm retired after 2000. We meet up in the airport after the Olympic Games. I go, Mike, where are you going? He goes, I got to go to my first day of high school. I'm so excited. Where are you going? And I said, I got to go plan my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Testament to his excellence. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Maxime, thank you for stopping by and for winning that. You get the deck pass live <gasps> home game. Yay! Ding, Enjoy ding, ding, ding. it. Thank you. And yes. actually, we want to say that we did have somebody out there who did get all four correct. It's my sometime Deck yep. Pass Live host, Carolyn Joyce, who is Thank probably you. as much of a swim nerd as I am. She really is. She, and, and she was a sprinter, too. Yeah. Yes. So 50 <laughs> freestylers be nice. I know, right? And David Reeder almost got it, too. He got three out of four. He did lot, get them. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people got Dara Torres and Michael Phelps. Sure. I knew nobody was going to get Felicia no. Lee absolutely amazing Great questions though Jeff yeah they were really good so we got a lot of racing to go tomorrow we've got some really good swims we got the hunter backstroke tomorrow yeah. hunter breaststroke I just cannot wait to see these swims hunter breaststroke I'm really excited to see this guy 30 years old Brandon Fisher yeah he broke a minute at the Clovis meet last month yep oh my gosh I just cannot believe what he's able to do can he get himself on the national team that, that would, would be amazing at that age. That would be so great. I would love that. And one thing, too, we've got Reagan Smith entered in the women's 100 backstroke. Yeah. We will see, which is where she, yeah. here she is right at the world. This is on the medley relay leading off when she just did amazing and broke that 100 backstroke world record. Are we going to see her swim this year tomorrow? I don't know. She's entered. We're going to find out tomorrow if she shows up. I just, I still get chills watching this. This was amazing. I loved how she just comes off these walls. And, and look at this reaction. Finished. She's like, oh, my God, I did it. 
coach. She's so cute. Maxime, do, do you have any insider information? Is she going to swim this tomorrow? I do not have any insider information, but right. I, I'm still in all of that. Like, right. I think I, I saw the statistic. Two races, three world records. Yeah. yeah. Has that ever been done? I can't imagine because I it's hard to break a, an so. individual world record so. and the world record on the relay. It's Those very hard. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so amazing. So yeah. we'll see if we see her tomorrow. I would love to see right? that. Right. Also, are we going to see Madison Cox tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, in the Hunter brush brush stroke. Stroke. So that'll be a lot of fun. A lot of racing tomorrow. You definitely want to check that out. Yep. On, on the Olympic channel, but you before you watch all the races and find you want to catch Amy and me on Deck Pass Live at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Maxime may even stop by and say Who hi knows? again. He's going to do, a, you know, he's got nothing else to do. And um, then at 9.45 Eastern, we're going to be wrapping it up after finals to talk about the top races there. But then you want to definitely go to the Olympic channel tomorrow to watch all those races. We also we mentioned the 400 freestyles. I believe Zane Gorthy is going to be swimming that and the men's coming off the World Championships. Yep. And that's going to be fun to see uh, and then we also have the, some some relays as well so it's always going to be exciting again fresh faces first time national champions every day including this guy sitting next to us Maxime Rooney who's going to be a new national champion tomorrow can't wait to find out that's right we want to say thank you Maxime for joining us also thank, thank you, you to Madison me. Cox for joining us this evening and again stay with us tomorrow for all of Deck Pass Live you're going to love it we will give you all the insider information I'm Amy Van Dyken I'm Jeff Cummings that's Maxime Rooney We'll see you tomorrow. Cool.